Good morning and welcome again to our daily devotional. Let's bow together in prayer as we commence our time together. Let's pray. Our gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that at the start of this another day, we are called aside to spend time in your presence. We are called to remind ourselves, O oh Lord, that it is in you that we live and move and have our being, that it is you that has spared us and blessed us through this night. It is you that has awoken us, blessed us with food and clothing and enabled us to be up and about this morning. It is you who has looked upon us in your mercy and love and grace and come to us in the person of your Son, Jesus Christ, and it is you that has extended to us the wonderful offer of forgiveness of sins and of life which is everlasting. We come then, Lord, to feed afresh upon the riches of your word and pray that by your Holy Spirit you would minister the truth of that word into our hearts to enlighten our minds in the things of Jesus Christ and to warm our hearts in a deeper love and affection toward him. And so we ask this together with the forgiveness of our many sins in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, this morning we're going to read together from uh, the first letter of Peter. We're going to spend some mornings just working our way through this letter. And we're reading today just the first few verses. The Word of God. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the world, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood, grace and peace be yours in abundance. There are some quite remarkable statements made here about our salvation. The truth is we are all too often prone to think of salvation in terms of Jesus dying or believing and sometimes that's as far as our thinking goes. But here the Apostle Peter would remind us that this salvation that we enjoy through Jesus Christ, and yes, through our believing in him, actually is rooted in the triune nature of Almighty God. He reminds us here that we are God's elect, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Here is the first person of the triune God head. And we are reminded by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Ephesians that it was before time itself that we were chosen in Christ, chosen by the Father in Christ. We were elected by God the Father for this amazing salvation that God himself set his love upon us before even the foundations of this world were laid and he resolved to save us through his son. So it is God the Father, we are told, who chooses us. It is, we are told, through Jesus Christ and the shedding of his blood that this salvation becomes ours. Here is the second person in the Godhead. Now remember, this was all planned and purposed in eternity, whilst God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit resolved the salvation of a great multitude and resolved how that salvation would be wrought. And that salvation would involve one coming to pay the penalty for sin and one coming to submit himself to the law in his obedience and in his death and that one is Jesus Christ 
And it is through the shedding of his precious blood that he has redeemed to himself a people, that people given him by his father before time itself began. We have God the Father involved in our salvation. We have God the Son involved in our salvation. And the third thing we're told is through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. How is this marvellous salvation purchased for us by Christ to become ours in our experience? Well, here we're told it is that third person in the Godhead who brings that salvation to bear upon our lives. We were reminded on a previous morning when Jesus said the wind blows where it pleases, so are those who are born of the Spirit. Here is the Spirit's work. It is to apply to our lives that salvation planned in eternity, purchased for us in time by Jesus Christ, and now in the course of our lives, brought to our own personal experience and enjoyment. It is that time in our lives when he has opened our eyes to see ourselves for what we are. He has enabled us to behold in Christ our only hope of salvation, and he has granted us the gift of faith whereby we are able to believe on him for the salvation of our souls. And we are reminded that what this salvation does is transfer us from the kingdom of darkness and bring us into the kingdom of the Son whom he loves. And there's something further hinted at here in this passage that we do well to note to God's elect strangers in the world. You see, before we came to know Christ, we were at home in the world. We were comfortable in the world. We reveled in the things of the world. But once God has set his love upon us, once Christ had died for us, once the Holy Spirit had come to renew us and to change us and to bring us into the family of God, then we began to feel aliens in this world. We began to feel different. We began to feel this world is not our home. We are just a passing through. And so it was the great father of the faithful, Abram, who though he received that promised land, we are told he was like a stranger in a foreign land. He was longing for a city whose builder and maker is God. And this reminds us that our ultimate aim in salvation is not to know our life and sins forgiven here upon this earth, but it is one day to enter that glorious place and there to share eternity with that same God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, to whom our entire salvation is due and who shall receive from us the praise the honour and the glory forever and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless his word to us. Let us bow in prayer together. Let us pray. Our loving Father, our minds struggle to take in the wonder of this so great salvation. We confess, O Lord, that we have not often enough plumbed the depths that there are in Scripture concerning what it meant for you, the eternal God, to purchase us and our salvation. Father, we marvel that before time itself began, you had set your love upon your people, that Christ had covenanted to come and be their substitute and die in their place, and that the Holy Spirit consented to bring that work to bear upon our lives. And so it is that for any of us who know you this day, it is all due to the sovereign grace and work of our great God and Saviour. And so it is no small wonder that down through the generations, your people have been able to echo the words 
of John Newton, that slave trader rescued and saved and transformed when he penned the words Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And so we come to give you thanks for such amazing grace in our lives at this time. Father, as we turn to you once again today, we're mindful of the needs of many at this time. Lord, we're conscious and day and daily we bring these needs before you, the needs of our National Health Service, the needs, Lord, of our medics, the needs of our doctors and nurses, the needs of our care assistants in nursing homes or in visiting uh, folk in their own homes, the need for that personal protection equipment. We pray, loving Father, that not only would this come through, but indeed that all of these individuals will take that extra care and precautions to protect themselves and to protect those whom they seek to help. Father, we continue to cry out to you for your mercy to be shown us in these days. And Father, we continue to pray that you would be gracious to us. And so we come to you today asking your blessing upon all who are seeking to help others through these difficult times. We remember, Lord, our children and especially those of our young people who are receiving results based on coursework, based on previous examinations, and Lord, left a little unsure, a little uncertain as to how things are going to unfold uh, for the summertime and then for schooling or for college or for university or for apprenticeship or whatever might follow come September. We pray that our young people will learn the truth of the scripture, that when they commit their way unto the Lord, they can rest assured that even in all these difficult circumstances, he will direct their paths. May they know your peace as they rest and trust in you. Father, we commit ourselves afresh to you. Here we are now nearly four weeks on from the start of this time when we could no longer be with one another, meeting together and enjoying each other's company. We do thank you for every way in which we have sought to encourage one another. We do thank you for each other, that whether that's been a phone call or just the knowledge that we're being remembered in prayer. All these things are a means of blessing to us. So we commit this day to you. We know that your grace will be sufficient for us. May we rest in it and know your peace throughout it for the sake of your dear Son, our Saviour, even Jesus Christ, in whose lovely name we pray. Amen. Amen. <music>